So, where'd you go to school? Uh, the internet. You're hired. Hello world, it's Siraj. And I've designed a study plan to help anyone with zero coding experience gain the practical skills necessary to land a software engineering job at a technology company with a particular emphasis on the biggest ones. If I was preparing for an interview, I'd follow it myself. There are lots of blog posts on the internet that demonstrate how by following a solid study plan for a few months, people went from having no coding experience to getting several offers from big tech companies. That may seem whack AF, but the reality is that being great at technical interviews doesn't necessarily make you a great programmer, and being a great programmer doesn't necessarily make you a great interviewer. Most tech companies draw from the same pool of interview material and adopt the same set of coding challenges for candidates to solve. Generally, these interviews all follow a similar progression. An initial phone screen, a technical phone screen, sometimes a take-home coding assignment, then three to five technical on-site interviews before a decision is made. In order to be successful, you'll not only need to know a programming language, you'll also need to understand important computer science concepts like iteration, recursion, arrays, matrices, linked lists, queues, stacks, heaps, sets, hash maps, trees, binary search, graphs, and dynamic programming, and quantum machine learning. Scratch that last one. I know that might seem overwhelming, but it's not. It won't be, as long as you follow my study plan consistently and with sustained enthusiasm. So let's start with step one. Create a list of companies and roles that interest you. If you're interviewing with multiple companies at the same time, while still in school or working a day job, the amount of things you'll have to remember, like names, company information, and role descriptions, will absolutely be overwhelming. That's why it's important to use a tool to keep track of where you are in the interview pipeline chronologically. I really like Trello. It's a free tool where tasks are represented by cards and each step of the process is represented by a column. Cards are moved between columns as they work their way through the process. You can create cards for companies that you're interested in. Apple forgot how to innovate, so they're probably not gonna be included. Then move them along the columns as you progress through the interview process, from the initial application to the phone screen to each round of interviews, all the way until you get either an offer or a rejection from them. In order to find jobs, LinkedIn is a pretty amazing tool in this regard. You just have to enter in the type of role and location you're looking for to get a huge list of results. You'll want to store job info in Trello, including a link to the job posting, any research about the company, and notes from every meeting that you'll have with them. The next step is to learn one programming language really well. When I was a developer educator at Twilio, I was writing documentation for nine different programming languages, from PHP to Python, and they were simple to learn since I already knew Java. For programming interviews, you should definitely learn Python. It has less cognitive overhead than other languages, which makes writing it faster, and has plenty of shortcuts, which come in handy on the whiteboard, like counter, collection, and default dict. For example, the most useful data structure to know for interviews is the hash map. It's an unordered collection of key value pairs, where each key is unique. If you don't know what you're doing, just throw a hash map at a problem and you'll likely make some progress. Python dictionaries make implementing a hash map very simple. Stacks and queues are also very common solutions to interview problems. You can use Python lists to easily create each of these. The fastest way to learn Python is to read the free online book Automate the Boring Stuff with Python with your text editor open next to it, typing and compiling any practice program that the book demonstrates. If you prefer video content, it's got that too as a YouTube playlist. Once you've learned Python, it's time to familiarize yourself with data structures and algorithms. I recommend the free Udacity course that covers this topic in Python. In it, you'll learn about all the computer science concepts I mentioned at the beginning, how they work, when to use them, and what their limitations are. Now it's time to start designing your portfolio, a crucial part of the interview process. This is what potential employers look at to validate your skill set. It's what gets your foot in the door for an interview in the first place. 
GitHub is the new resume, so the most important bit here is to have three personal projects on your GitHub account. If you don't know how to use GitHub, watch my video on the topic. Use a Python web framework like Flask or Django to build three web apps with user signup functionality. Pick app ideas that interest you, maybe a simple note-taking app, maybe a photo sharing app, maybe the robot girl from Ex Machina. This is important for several reasons. First, it teaches you about all the supplementary tools you need to build a web app besides just Python, databases, user interface design, networking, and API integration. It also teaches you about system design. After that, it's time to design your resume and personal website. I have detailed videos on those topics. Make sure to watch them. Now for the most important part of this process, improving your data structures and algorithm skills through practice. Enter LeetCode. LeetCode is really popular. It's a place to practice creating solutions to questions that commonly show up during these technical interviews. The questions are grouped into easy, medium, and hard. Start off with the easy questions, that way you avoid getting demotivated from not being able to solve a problem. Also, buy a whiteboard and do some of those problems on it. Doing so is good practice for the actual interview, which will be on a whiteboard and helps you visualize concepts like dynamic arrays or hash maps. You should spend at least two hours a day solving these problems and give yourself a maximum of 45 minutes to solve each problem since you'll also be timed during an interview. In general, people who got offers from big tech companies completed up to 150 of these questions beforehand. Complete 100 easy questions, 50 medium, and two hard. The vast majority of questions asked during an actual interview are in the medium and easy categories. And after you complete a problem and check for the proper solution, remember to ask yourself this crucial question. What is the one thing I could have done or known that would have made everything easier? And write down your answer. This will reduce your chance of repeating the same mistake the next time. In this way, you can track your progress on these questions. Include things like what problem you've solved and how many minutes you allocated for that problem. This will also help you understand what your weaknesses are. Do you have a good understanding of algorithmic design paradigms like back tracking and exhaustive search? Do you know the pros and cons of each data structure? Are we inside of a simulation? The answers to all of these questions will become clear as you progress through lead code questions, allowing you to focus on improving your weaknesses. At first, these problems will be difficult and will take you the full 45 minutes. But after doing dozens, you'll start getting faster and faster and the medium problems will seem a lot easier. You're not trying to memorize answers, you're learning to spot patterns. If you see a search in a sorted collection, think binary search. If the question is about the minimum number of steps, think breadth first search. Optimization, think dynamic programming. Obviously there are no strict rules here, but you should generally know what direction to start with when you're given a problem. And then you can figure it out easily enough during the interview from there. It's all about mastering the art of problem solving, identifying patterns and practicing for it. I've defined a meta algorithm for you, an algorithm that helps you solve algorithms. First, come up with a brute force solution. That means not necessarily the most efficient solution, but the one that will at least work. Then think of a simpler version of the problem. Try noticing a pattern with the simpler examples. Use a visualization to aid you in thinking about it. Then use the visualization and any patterns you learned from the simple example to try to come up with an even more efficient solution for the original problem. Then test your solution on a few examples to ensure it works. Once you have your solution, explain it out loud in plain English. Then write it out step by step as bullet points. Then write it out as pseudocode. Then the necessary function definitions. And finally, the implementation. This lets the interviewer know you are both reasonable and methodical in your approach to solving problems. They'll also almost always ask follow-up questions like, how would you make this faster or more efficient? That's why it's so important to understand time complexity, space complexity, and big O notation. It's one thing to know that bubble sort is slower than insertion sort, 
and another thing entirely to be able to explain how much slower and why. Once you feel comfortable with categorizing and solving leak code problems, you want to practice system design questions. System design questions are really an open-ended conversation. If the company is Twitter, they may ask how you design the Twitter timeline. If they're Amazon, they might ask you to design an autonomous Jeff Bezos bot. I found this incredible GitHub repository titled The System Design Primer with so many resources to help you learn here. My favorite being the set of flashcards they have that integrate with the Anki flashcard program. Practice these for two hours a day until you complete them all. Answering these types of questions can be broken down into a four part process. First, outline the use cases, constraints, and assumptions about the system. This includes questions like who's going to use it? What are the inputs and outputs of the system? And how much data do we expect to handle? Then create a high level design using boxes and arrows. Next, design the core components. For example, if you're asked to design a URL shortening service, discuss generating and storing a hash of the full URL. Will you use MD5 or Base62 for encoding? How will you translate the hashed URL back to the full URL? And what does the API for this look like? Lastly, and for the biggest companies, this is the crucial part, decide how you'll scale the design. There are many techniques out there that address bottlenecks in software to allow them to scale, like database sharding and load balancing. Once you've completed the system design flashcards, it's time to start practicing mock interviews. The difference between lead code and interviews is that interviews are meant to be collaborative. You're not expected to develop a solution 100% by yourself. The interviewer will be listening as you narrate your thoughts, will feed you appropriate hints, and prod you if you start going off track. Part of this interviewing process is to test things like how well you can work with others and that you respond well to being told you're wrong. Interviewing.io is the best free tool for this. It lets you practice both algorithmic and system design questions anonymously with senior engineers at top tech companies. They even give you actionable feedback after your mock interview so that you can improve. This is really good practice in asking clarifying questions about a problem in real time. Once you feel comfortable with this, you're ready to start reaching out to recruiters. First, go ahead and apply via a company's standard careers page. Now, to expedite the process, LinkedIn is best. Do a people search and type in recruiter and the company name you're looking for, as well as the zip code of the area you want to work in. Click search and you'll see a huge list of recruiters pop up. LinkedIn charges to send some of these people messages, but you can download this free Chrome extension that I personally use called getprospect.io that will automatically pull their email and hand it to you. Come at me, LinkedIn. Send them a one paragraph email with your background, your interest in the company, and your inquiry to learn more about the role. If they like you, you'll get a phone interview scheduled next. The first phone screen is just to make sure you're not a sociopath and answer any questions about the role you may have. Once you complete that, it's time for the first technical interview. This is where all of that lead code practice will come in handy. Once you complete the phone interview, some of them may or may not give you a take home a coding assignment. This is where your GitHub project practice comes in handy. You can quickly prototype a solution and send it back. After that, it's time for the on-site interviews. Before you go on-site for three to five interviews with an engineering team, learn more about the company's principles and values. Companies will want to see if you're a cultural fit as well. Also, interviews can be anxiety inducing if you put all of your hopes and dreams into a single company. Don't. Always, always have a backup plan and be sure to smile and be kind with your interviewers. After your on-sites, send each company a follow-up thank you note. This helps differentiate you from the pack and increases positive sentiment towards you in the company. Getting rejected sucks, but it happens to everybody. In fact, most top engineers have been. So if you ever get demoralized by rejection, just go to rejections.us. It's basically a collection of past rejection stories from top engineers at tech companies. The link to my study plan is in the video description. If you made it to the end of this video, I'm proud of you. It's time to start studying. Happy learning, wizard.